All right, we've got head coach Eric Ramsey. Eric, congrats on your first uh, postseason uh, penalty shootout victory tonight. Um, we're going to go with John Marthaler to kick us off. Hey, coach, uh, how is your heart rate at this point? I was actually surprisingly calm. I, I feel like we 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 turned over every stone we could in uh, in the build up to this on penalties. So I felt like if we if we won, it would have justified the work. If we lost there wouldn't have been anything that we could have done all that different. So um, I was pretty, pretty balanced about it. And I, I just had a good feeling based on, on the preparation that we'd done yesterday and um, the general level of conviction across the group. I had sort of back down to make a save. I know that didn't transpire to be the case, but I think big presence, big personality, it's, uh, it's certainly an imposing figure in the goal. So I felt like we, we had the upper hand. So um, it, it didn't surprise me that we won it. All right, Andy or John, Ben, feel free to popcorn off each other. Eric, which of the five, uh, five penalty kick takers that, that made them uh, impress you most from the spot? Uh, it's difficult to, to single out any individual. I think I think Kelvin got us off to a really good start, hence why we put him first. We really trust him in those situations. He's proved over the course of his time here already that he's got the... Um, the personality to handle that situation. I think he, he would have probably chosen to go last. I think he's a man for a big moment, but we felt like we wanted to really get ahead, put the pressure on the opposition and, and trust that Dane would make a save as it went on. And again, although that didn't transpire to be the case, I felt like um, the first couple of guys got us off to a good start, which is always difficult. So uh, we, we, we really appreciated that. All right, Ben, go for it. What does it mean to have Dane make uh, so many big saves in a game like this and really show up? Yeah. Uh, I, I think I don't. I don't really want to overplay Dane's performance because I feel like he made he made a couple of saves, a couple of routine saves. I don't feel like we gave the huge chances away to them. Um, I think if you look at the the stats, that that would be reflected. I don't think there were there were big chances given up either way. Really, I think it was very even in that sense. So um, I sort of felt like as we opened up. We, we started to leak a little bit more space that wasn't there in the, the opening stages. And we're obviously at a stage where we're, particularly away from home, choosing between one of the two, being very, very disciplined in how much space we give away and not creating loads and loads beyond opportunities on the counter-attack or uh, forcing the game a little bit more with the ball and, and being slightly more open. And I felt like that was probably how the second half panned out. Um, and therefore... Dane was called into action a couple more times, and, and and as was their goalkeeper. So I think it was it was truly a very even game, and uh, and given that we're we're coming here as the away team in difficult conditions, I think that is um, that's hats off to us for sure. John, uh, between the regular season game and this one, you basically played three halves with not much either way, and then suddenly the game opened up in the second half. What were you able to do differently to get some chances against Real Salt Lake? Yeah, well, we we obviously forced it a little bit with the substitutions we made. We um we we didn't we didn't like the first 15, 20 minutes of the game. That that wasn't how we intended to look. We we looked for me far too far too deep, far too passive, not building pressure well enough. And um I think sort of twenty minutes onwards that started to change a touch early stages of the second half once we were able to make a couple of corrections at half time and and nudge the players to be more aggressive, less passive um more more front foot in the way we defended i think that that started to force the game a little bit but then i will also stress as we open up so does the game and then and then that's the point at which they start to get chances i think um the first half in particular that we gave away very little we we gave them a chance of our own making through giving the ball away really cheaply in the box but beyond that we were very solid very disciplined and i think now um that's that's a, a goal conceded in six games which as, as you guys will well know, that's very difficult to achieve, I think, at, at this level. So um, I'm really pleased with the defensive effort, but also pleased that we were able to to start to find a foothold in the game with the ball and, and create a couple of really good chances. Eric, what did you feel like you did uh, well defensively? It looked like you kind of logged things down in the middle and forced them wide. Yeah, they, I mean, they, they, they obviously repeatedly switched on us, which is um, sometimes more difficult to, to prevent than... Uh, you might think looking from the from the sidelines in the sense that they're a team that drops they drop so many players outside of your shape 
it's very difficult to prevent every single one of them switching play quick. So um, we felt like we were we were we were sort of quite happy to take our medicine in that sense, and and we knew we could defend the switch as well. And I think both Bongi and Joe largely did a good job in that sense, and 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 we were able to support them really well. Um, so I would say that would be one standout thing. I think other than the points at which they had counter attacks, largely we restricted the space for the the creative players they've got um, in a, in Arango, Crooks and Luna and the guys that came on in between the lines. So um, I feel like it would have been really tough. It would have been a monumental effort to come here and restrict them to to very little, particularly given that we wanted a, to force the game a little bit in the second half. But I think largely it was another very good defensive performance and um, I would say another step forward. Go for it, John. Uh, for looking forward to Saturday's, Saturday's game a little bit, will it be sort of another kind of defense first kind of plan? Or are you thinking at home you want to change things and attack the game a little more? I think, I think we, uh, we're we always going to be de de defense first. I feel like that's um, that's the basis of most good teams. I think the even the top teams that you might associate as, as being – solely possession teams I'm I'm fairly adamant the coaches will start with how the team looks defensively and I feel like it would be naive for us to go away from being a team that is incredibly difficult to beat and um, very disciplined very difficult to score against very difficult to create chances against because we're we're sat in a position where we we're a win away from going through in the first round precisely because of that so I don't feel like we need to change that in any way I feel like the um, the atmosphere at home the energy at home obviously the lack of uh, the altitude that you experience here, that will all contribute to us us looking different, more exciting, more energetic, more dynamic. Um, the two games will be very different in that sense. And as I've, I've, I've said ahead of the last two home games, I don't worry about us scoring goals at home. I don't worry about us creating chances, looking dynamic, looking energetic. Um, the, the two games are obviously very different for the, the context and the conditions. So um, I, I have no worries that the players will look... Um, We'll, we'll look like a different team come Saturday, but what, what what I won't compromise on is is how we look defensively for sure. Eric, we saw Cam Knowles kind of leading things, uh, kind of determining the the PK order. How did that come to be, and and kind of how did you determine? Well, we wanted we were very sort of intentional with how we wanted to handle that. Um, that situation, we talked about it as a staff. We didn't want there to be loads of noise around the players. I think you see typically in those situations that. So every staff member wants their say and, and the players get a lot of information and we decided um, ahead of ahead of the practice that we've done this week that um, Cam would just deal with it with the players and, and we would try and eliminate any any distraction that could possibly creep in and um, whether that added effect or not, I don't know, but it was certainly cleaner from my perspective. There was nothing that I could add, nothing that um, me or Dennis had talked about adding in that situation. I feel like probably that, that level of calmness and... Um, trust in the process stood us in good stead. All right, we've got uh, time for one or two more questions. John? Uh, against St. Louis, you made a triple substitution to change the game a little bit. What were you hoping to accomplish with sort of the double sub with Oluwishi and Jung coming out? Yeah, I don't I don't feel that we were we're in a particularly bad moment in the game at the point in which we made those changes. I would have I was I had in my mind we might have changed earlier, but I felt like as we approached an hour, um we'd had a couple of good moments between Kelvin, Robin and Joaquin. But it's as as you know, it's it's taxing the conditions are here because of the altitude and um because of the way in which they use the ball, particularly for the front players. We wanted to make sure that we we had some legs either side of Kelvin as the game went on and um obviously didn't want to take Kelvin Calvin off because I felt like he, he he was showing signs of getting a chance and I think irrespective of how the game's going, Kelvin will always it will always find a moment to be a threat and that proved to be the case as it went on and obviously Sangbin and Tani came on with with legs and we were able to build pressure better um, and I think that saw us through to 90 minutes well and uh, and then we made the change with with uh, Hassani on account of um, him him feeling a little bit which which is expected given the the amount of running that him and will get through and and, and the conditions and the way they take their target for all the planning you guys did how uh, surprising was it to see jefferson be the one at the spot to to seal it yeah i, I mean i it's easy to say in hindsight but i didn't doubt jefferson in that situation he's a very very cool customer very level-headed um, I think you'll, you'll have seen he, he's taken everything in his stride since he's been here. He's quiet, serious, gets on with it, confident. I think he, he was probably just the man for that job. And I would have had no uh, no qualms had I seen him step up second or third. All right, John, uh, you can finish us out here. 
Do you feel like the front office coming out to training yesterday really made the difference in the penalty shootout today? Yeah, I, I would like to think so. I would like to think that um, probably without that, the players w wouldn't have had maybe the level of conviction that, that largely they showed. Um, I think it was it was a bit of fun. It was probably good for the the club's morale, but there was there was a, a real sense of um, us being intentional behind that. And and I, as I said at the beginning of this, felt relatively calm, knowing that I, I felt we'd done as 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 much as we possibly could have done. And, um, stopping short of repeating that a couple of times, so uh, I was really pleased that we'd included that as part of our prep. Really pleased that we talked very um, purposefully about how we were going to manage that situation. Obviously, really pleased with how the players responded. So I think it's uh, it's uh, it's a good nod toward the quality of the process and and really trusting that. All right, we appreciate your time, Eric. Safe travels back, and we'll see you later Thanks, this guys. week in Minnesota. Thank you. Eric. Thank you. All right, we've got goalkeeper Dan St. Clair. Dan, congrats on uh, tonight's game one shootout victory. Um, thank you for joining us, taking some time. Uh, you've got Andy Greeter, John Marthaler, and then uh, Benjamin Steiner in Canada with you tonight. So, Andy, would you like to kick us off? Dan, what did you feel like uh, was key in, in the penalty shootout? Obviously, you didn't have to make a save, but uh, two two guys missed. What did you feel like was was key for you to kind of maybe force them to to miss or did you see something about how they approached it that that told you they was going to be off their line uh yeah i think uh first and foremost presence i think uh a save or a miss goes down is the same thing for me as long as the ball doesn't cross the line i feel like i've done my job so i think a lot of the work that i try to do sometimes is uh before um leading up to the justin i mean we have a decent relationship um through the pa and things like that so i kind of just gave him a smile when he looked up at me and then um Obviously, unfortunately, when you see one of your your, your friends do poorly, but uh, once I cross the white line, I don't really have many friends unless they're, they're wearing the same colors as me. Um, and then on the second one, of course, uh, once we've scored the R's, them shooting second puts the pressure on them in a sudden death moment. So just asking the ref if uh, in those moments, if they miss, is it, is it going to be over? And just making them kind of think about that process. And I think uh, obviously um, when one guy misses in, in my record, I think, they're probably thinking in their head, well, he's due for a save in, in this next one. So I got to put the ball in the top corner or, or do something which forced them to to kind of shoot high versus on the ground, which, of course, when you shoot high, there's, there's always a risk of missing the net. And today, the crossbar was, was a good friend of mine. So uh, hopefully uh, me and him continue to be a, a good relationship. John, go for it. Uh, now that's one goal in six games that the defense has given up. Where's your confidence at level at right now, defensively speaking? Yeah, I think it's through the roof, but at the same time, we know that um, it's it's one other game, and if we go on a bad stretch, um, it means nothing. So I think uh, it's just continuing to to build on that, and we know that the past has been been the past, and I think obviously we're confident in, in penalty shootouts uh, with our takers and within myself. So I think uh, it's something that we looked obviously going into this game. If if we don't concede, we put ourselves in a good chance to to get it closer to to moving on. Dan, there was a moment, I think, 51st or so uh, minute with uh, Diego Luna and Chicho Arango, the double save. Walk me through kind of coming off your line to, to stop both of those. Yeah, I think um, they're clever players. So I think obviously when you have a set piece like that, uh, some guys kind of shut up, shut off. And I think uh, it's my job to kind of be alert. And I see kind of Diego making the run and then obviously they play him through. And I think we, we did a good job to recover. Obviously, I make the first save and then we're able to clear it. And then, I mean, when I'm out of my net at that point, I'm just trying to stay. I think reverting back to my line doesn't really do many help. So just trying to stay big. And of course, I know I got guys behind me that can that can potentially clear the ball on the line there. So I think uh, in that moment, I'm just trying to stay the, stay big and read the cues of uh, when to step out and then obviously when to stay out there. Uh, Eric Ramsey said all week that he was telling the team that the, the important thing is to get a chance to clinch the series at home on Saturday. What does it mean to potentially be able to clinch the series at Allianz Field? For sure. We knew, obviously, to move on, we knew that we're going to have to get a result here uh, no matter what to move on. So we kind of came with the mindset, let's do it the first game. And obviously the fans have showed us a lot of love. So be able to kind of show them, show them, um, have the ability for us to move on in front of them. And we know, obviously, what they bring as well as, in terms of the atmosphere and uh, obviously there's going to be a lot more pressure on Salt Lake now going in a, into a must win for them. 
but we're definitely looking at it as a as a must win because we don't want to come back here either. Dane, of the five penalty makes, did anyone uh, impress you with the poise, placement, anything along those lines? Any ball that crosses the line is a good penalty <laughs> in the book. All right, we got time for a couple more questions. Dane, what did you feel like was key uh, defensively to to kind of force them wide and and not have them kind of come straight at you? Yeah, I think um, the one thing we've really done and focused on a team is defending as 11. And of course, um, I know the strikers, obviously it's a lot of hard work for them. And of course they'd rather be closer to the other net, but um, credit to them because I think when they drop, we know that once we get in our blocks, it's very hard to us to break down. And I think obviously between Hassani and Will, the, the amount of distance and stuff that they do to, to kind of cover and uh, shift side to side, of course, it's not always the, the prettiest work and it's obviously tiring, but I think uh, we've really kind of honed into that, which we know that it makes teams very difficult to to kind of break us down in, in those moments and obviously limits the amount of chances. Like, like I think in the first half, their only chance came off our own turnover. So I think obviously there's there's proof of, of what we're doing as well. And I think that kind of builds confidence in us as well. What did the referee say to you when you when you asked him if the uh, last kick is a winner? I mean, is, that seems like a rhetorical question. Did he even entertain that? I mean, I, I did it on the fifth one as well. It wasn't so effective because the guy put the ball in the top corner. But um, I think it's just kind of building it up and making maybe creating doubt or whatever in their mind. I think obviously kind of knew what I was doing. So just told me to to get back on, on my line like they normally do. But I think obviously keepers, unfortunately, with the rules are so unfavored in, in these moments. So I think any 1% or anything that you can do to try to uh, give yourself an advantage is, is something that you have to try to try to take, whether uh, the risk is, is not always obviously there because – no matter what, they're they're still expected to score from that distance, I think. All right, final call for questions. Going Dane, once. Dane, what did you feel like uh, having uh, front office members at training yesterday did for preparing for PKs? Yeah, I think obviously you can practice as much as you want, um, but obviously what comes into play is, is the pressure. So I think uh, having people in those moments um, to kind of create a little bit more pressure, having people behind the net making noise, whatever it may be, obviously kind of makes it a little bit more realistic, but in, at the same time, I've seen guys hit hit the top corner 10 times in training and then show up to the game and they don't even want to take one. So I think obviously we have a lot of guys that are prepared for the moment. And I, I told them before before the, before uh, we went in that I was confident um, that they would do their job based on what I've seen in, in my ability in them and that they I knew that they were confident in me and we'd get this, this done and not have to come back here. And that'll do it for tonight. Dane, thank you so much for taking time with us. Safe travels back. We'll see you later on this thing, week in Minnesota. Uh, one last thing. I think, uh, obviously, both goalies, I think, put in a really good performance tonight. And, obviously, the GK Union uh, lost lost a soul. So, I think, obviously, it's a sad moment for, for everyone. But I think uh, he's definitely can look down and be proud of uh, both keepers tonight. Appreciate that, Dane. Thank, thank, thank you, Dane. Thank you so much.